Welcome to Unscripted Gaming. My name is Stan. My name is Mike, and I'm back from vacation here to drop some E3 hot takes. Is that right, Stan? Is that what we're here for? Some hot takes. You know, the hot takes. Yeah, sure. The sure. spiciest and going. warmest of takes. Okay, I'm, let's not bury the lead here. This was possibly one of the most boring E3s I've watched in a long, long time from a consumer standpoint. You know, I mean, I, I guess, like... You know, I think th it, it wasn't game. exactly like a splashy, you know, there wasn't like surprise games or tons of, you know, big surprise, like lots of information left and right here, especially, I mean, with, you know, the NX not being shown off here and PlayStation, I think it's a strange move to really not even talk about the Neo stuff. Um, even though Microsoft no, really did that, none of that existed. They, like, they didn't even so really, not getting that. a lot of information on those two things kind of was um, didn't make it seem as splashy. But really, when and just kind of looking over it, I think that we saw a lot of a lot of cool, just a lot of cool looks at like games. Like we're kind of in the cycle of uh, these consoles at this moment, where you know people really, you know. People are just really like are really starting to get their hands on the hardware, um, and are really just it's really at this point it's really about the games and just you know what kind of stuff you have on your console. So I don't know where you want to start here. Um, but I guess we're well. You had kind of wrapped up around day one, about, um, so why don't we start with stuff day day, one? day two stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, last time me and Josh talked about, you know, everything that happened day one, how we felt about it. And day two was basically, like, Nintendo. Uh, and the Nintendo conference was... Was it day two? Day two? Three? Nintendo whatever. was day three. Um, and day two... The Nintendo... Day two featured uh, uh, two very different conferences between uh, Microsoft, uh, you know, really talking about consoles, you know, Windows 10, no Windows 10 initiatives, and a couple other things, and Sony bringing in, you know, the orchestra and just letting game trailer after game trailer after game trailer just roll. Um, that was cool. Yeah, that was really interesting. To, it was something I wasn't expecting, but uh, mm -hmm. and um, and Ubisoft had some pretty cool things, as I think, to show off as well. So uh, their conference was just embarrassing. I think. It was purposely embarrassing. Oh, I, I think Ubisoft has become completely self-aware. Like I feel, I feel like I feel like they gave Aisha Tyler uh, some better jokes this year. I feel like she's had just a little bit more like kind of material where they're like, okay, everybody knows I'm here to make bad jokes, so we might as well just kind of lean into it all the whole way. And I was like, okay, I'm all right with this. This is almost hitting like the right balance of like. As Josh says, turn into the skid. It, ex exactly. And then, of course, you know, they open it with, like, there's, like, Queen blasting and there, uh, this rainbow-colored dancing happening to my face. It's like, ah, yes, the, the French Canadians are here. Ooh, okay, yes, aha, I know where I am. No, that was, that was horrible. Why? What? Oh, come on. Live a little, Stan. No, it come was, on. It was hard to watch. It was hard to watch because I'm thinking, what if my company like brought this out? Would I be proud of this? Hell no. Hell no, I would not be proud of this. Uh, I don't know. The, 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 the was, guy in the lion suit shaking his ass at the, everybody, like I I would not be proud I guess, of this at all. I guess I'm just someone who, you know, appreciates high energy. And that was very high energy. I appreciate yeah, I sure appreciate was. energy. That's what E three stands for. Energy three. That's what it's all about. Energy. Um, well, I guess I just just a couple of takeaways I had from, um, you, you know, kind of like I had mentioned, you know, with us really starting to see like a lot of games. I thought we got some real interesting looks at. Uh, the, I mean, pe franchises really taking some. You know, people are really starting to get to the point where they're you know taking risks and doing some really different stuff like. Um, God of War, um, you know... Ooh, can we talk about that for a bit? Yeah, that's what I... Let's, I mean, I, I, I had... I have pretty limited experience with the other ones, uh, but I had no... Really? Uh, yeah, I know, somehow, yeah, actually. Um, but I had heard from numerous people that they were very tired of that setting, you know, of the kind of the Greek mythology setting, and that... 
Well, so, I mean, and, like six games in, you kind of run exactly. Into the there's ground. there's only you know so much you can do there. So, uh, you know, I, I remember hearing reports about like, uh, you know, oh, now he's going to be in the in like you know with North Norse mythology, and it's like I mean, you know, it's just going to be is it gonna, really going to be a different coat of skin or a different coat of paint on the same kind of game here? But it really just like from the camera perspective, it looks like it almost. A, a little closer to like Dark Souls, almost in terms of the like what little combat we saw, and um, you know, a lo I think of a tighter story emphasis. Um, it was just like, all right, it was really different from what I had seen before. Which you know, I think, I mean, it's in kind of going off of that, and then seeing things like the new Zelda Breath of Wild, um, and just all the crazy different stuff like they're they're doing it. I mean, it looks more like. Far Cry or Metal Gear Five can then like an, an old Zelda game. Like a lot of companies, I think, are doing really kind of off kilter stuff with that uh, with their games, and I think that's really cool. Yeah, the uh, the God of War trailer where he apparently has a son or a mentor, or not a mentor, but a a scribe, or I don't know what the hell is going on there. But I appreciated it, and uh, Kratos now has an axe that he mentally controls. Uh, there was nothing about that trailer that I hated at all. Yeah. I'm in. I'm, I am... I'm in. I still haven't beat God of War 3. I'm actually on Amazon right now. I'm considering just buying the remastered version for uh, 20 bucks. Just having to go at that. But uh, I am so in. I am I am ready for Kratos to go f through some Norse mythology stuff. Yeah, I, I'm always down for just... You know, okay, we've seen this thing like before. Give me something, you know, really crazy and new with it. Like, I mean, okay, I, here you I, are. <laughs> I'm, I'm always down to see. I mean, developers take something that we know and you know turn it on its head. Like that's always super fun, and and you know, even in times where it maybe doesn't succeed perfectly, uh, you know, you can always kind of go back to those original ideas that worked for you, and it was just. I mean, it's just, it, it feels just so refreshing, and I think um, that was one thing I, I, I thought about this E3, was just even if it wasn't like, you know, splashy surprise games everywhere, um, I thought it was cool to see, you know, some really kind of just fresh, like, fresh takes on old genres, like, things like Horizon Zero Dawn, which, you know, weird name aside, I don't like that name. Um, I think has a really yeah, that, kind that of I think has a really fresh concept. setting and just a really yeah, a really yeah. kind of you know not a lot of other, other games look like this. Like I think that's that's really exciting. Just to you know it's colorful, but it's 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 yeah. I I'm really excited to see you know thing, things like that. And then the I mean you know obviously I have to talk about this because Kojima. But the whole Death Stranding stuff, um, I mean, I know it's r super early on. We're not going to see anything really substantial for quite a while. I mean, I'd say... Me and Josh talked briefly I'd say, about this. I'd say 2018. Kojima had to waste the opportunity to come out on stage and say, kept you waiting, didn't I? That was like, kept oh, you, waiting, you huh? had the chance, you didn't do it. <laughs> kept you waiting, huh? I, I, I wanted, Kojima it. And I wanted like it. Japanese voice. Oh my god, I wanted it was I wanted that so bad. But I mean, I'm really curious to see what that ends up being. Obviously, I mean, it's what I think. I, I yeah, I thought that was really interesting. I think that there's um, let's see. I guess what else I want to talk about. Oh. Just the fact that, like, can we about. talk about, like, the fact that they're actually remastering the Crash games? Like, that's so stupid. It's so no, stupid. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to buy that Stop day right one. There. First of all, because I'm a Crash chump. and Skylanders, I could not care less, but I am glad Don't care. That people Whatever. Like that's fine. Skylanders. Good for you. Crash is great. But, but remaster of Crash Bandicoot? I'm down. You know, people like Crash Bandicoot. I love, no, I love, I love Crash Bandicoot. I just, like... That's such a dumb idea. I'm totally gonna buy it, but like, what? <laughs> I I couldn't. You're like it's so stupid, but here's my money. It's, exactly. It's just like, on the one hand, this is so dumb. Like, what? What? Ooh, like, I don't know how. I don't think those games are gonna age that well. But okay. 
But on the other hand, I'm like, motherfucker, where's my Crash Team Racing remaster? That's what I really want. Or Crash Crash yeah, Bash is pretty good too. Oh man, not that. <sighs> Yeah, so that was that was something I was legitimately just not expecting. I was like, oh, well, okay then. Um, uh, let's go to Nintendo. So, so then and then <laughs> Nintendo showed a for for people that were watching the stream, they showed, hey, here's our four th three four minute trailer of the new Zelda game, and it looked good. It looked like what many people are calling. It's Zelda mixed with Skyrim, and that's not a bad thing. And no, it's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. They're like, all right, did you catch that? Did you blink? Did you miss it? Oh, too bad. We're going to talk about the new Pokemon game, Sun and Moon, for the next 90 minutes. People like Pokemon. And nothing else. <laughs> They're like, can I, can I learn about some Monster Hunter? No! <laughs> Pokemon! <laughs> can, I, can I learn about maybe a new... F Zero game? No. Here are the new starters for Pokemon. <laughs> How about I, I? I was like, at, there was a certain point where I'm like, I, I will take Metroid Federation screen footage at this point. Nope. More. I will take. Pokemon. I will take Metroid Federation amiibos before this. Please save me. I would not take Metroid Federation Force and because you, you've crossed the I was line. Just, I was just speaking for Josh. He just texted me and told me to mention that. You know, I just you know. Metroid Federation Force Amiibos are the, are those a thing? Did I miss that? No, no, I'm I'm, I'm kidding. Okay, okay, okay. You, you had me worried. I was about to I was about to see what that looks like. Oh my god! <laughs> but uh, the Nintendo press conference was very short, extremely short. Uh, apparently, you had to be there to experience like as much Zelda as you wanted to play. Supposedly, you had like fifteen to twenty minutes to go hit and play mm -hmm. and just experience the game. And then you know if you're part of the part of the industry you would go either write about it or go give your thoughts about it and that was it yeah i, I i'd seen uh, you know some gameplay and uh, gotten a lot of impressions from demos and it sounds i'm really curious to see i mean because we had gotten reports that that it just sounds like there's a lot going on there i mean there's cooking there's crafting there's stealth there's i mean di lots of stuff di like different things in the combat like it just sounds like there's a lot more, like, just in terms of the raw number of, like, systems in the game compared to, like, older Zeldas, that's super different. I mean, it's really exciting, and I think refreshing to see that kind of, to have that much more, in, like, a kind of engagement uh, within a Zelda game. But I hope that they, I mean, I, I, I guess I'm... It looked like it from other Zelda games, like other Zelda games that we've played, especially Skyward Sword, where Skyward Sword pretty much put its fingers up your nose and dragged you where it needed you to go. This mm -hmm. one's like, here's the open world. Good luck. I'm like, I... That harkens back to the original Legend of Zelda. Yeah, it really... I don't hate it that. It really I does. I think it kind of... This one really seems like it's going to foster a greater sense of exploration um, than I think a lot of the... a lot more of the modern Zeldas have. Uh, but, and again, I love the art style. I mean, just some of the music that they featured from the trailer I thought was great. I mean, you know, if there's one thing you don't need to be worried about in a Nintendo game, it's the score, it's the score but... Um, uh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm really interested to see what that ends up being and, you know, how that's like. And, I mean, that's honestly not too far away at this point. I mean, we've still got uh, early 2017, but that's coming up quick. Um, I guess a couple, uh, if there are any other couple of things um, I th really thought were interesting. I think, actually, mm -hmm. Ubisoft had some pretty decent stuff that uh, I wanted to see, uh, or that looked pretty interesting. I think uh, that, oh my gosh, uh, I think that Watch Dogs 2 looked a lot more appealing than uh, to me than Watch Dogs 1. Watch Dogs 1 ever did. Um, I mean, just in terms of the way the character is moving around the environment, that's a lot more energetic. Just the world's a lot more colorful. Um, I'm really curious to see... I mean, some of the uh, some of the story stuff is just a bit like, ah, ooh, like, you know... Yeah, that's it's, a very Trumpian reference. But, well, the the, that, and it's just a very, like, lay hack the planet with our memes. And I'm like, ah, mm, you mean, ah, and it's like... 
They're not really kind of leaning. It's I, th I think you're supposed to think like, oh, uh, how do you do, fellow kids? Um, that's it has a little bit of kind of that feel, which is like, yeah, okay. I mean, I don't mind a, a little bit of tongue-in-cheek humor in there. That, yeah, that, I, mean, I mean, it's just it, it seems much, like it has much more personality than Aiden's character. Yeah, at the, at the very at the ve that's what I was gonna say. At the very least, it just looks like I think this game not being so just like drab, like just looking at like just uh, screenshots here and there, it's just like wow, this place looks like it actually has, you know. More uh, yeah, like more like colors Ubisoft than took feedback and they're applying it. Oh, everybody panic! Panic! <laughs> Company took feedback and made positive. Oh my god! Uh, oh god! What do we it's do? It's almost as if they have incentive because some bigger company with a lot more money than them is trying to own their ass. Go! 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 Um, I feel bad for Ubisoft right now. Yeah, there. It's a, it's an interesting position to be in. Um. The but I mean, and then they had some stuff like I mean, Ghost Recon's uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. I mean, wasn't on my radar at all. Hashtag Narco State. It's happening. Uh. Um, but uh, some of that multiplayer stuff, like you know how you're basically, you know, working in, like teams of three and four. Um, Sidebar, they really need to stop with like the fake like multiplayer chatter. Like it's just really distracting. Yeah, everyone's like, calling like, them out. I on know that I they've been doing it for years and they just will never stop. It's like it, uh, and, and it's a, we all it's know, the dream. The, the crowd that they're catering to, like this is how voice chatter in this game works. Like the crowd you're telling that to, we know you're full of we bullshit. Know that, we know because we play that every day. It's just like, oh please someday. But, I mean, when that was, I could really see, I mean, hopping in, kind of rolling, and, like, if you, it's, if if the, it kind of turns into some sort of, like, co-op multi, or co-op, like, Metal Gear Solid 5 kind of thing, like, that sounds really appealing to me. And uh, I thought, and, and then uh, kind of the other title that they showed off there was, um, oh, shoot, off the, I don't have the, name off the top of my head but it's like uh it's like the kind of extreme sports like snowboarding skiing um oh my gosh where'd it go uh uh hold on it's like uh, i do it's steep. like press or it's steep, steep that's, that's what, what it is, is. and uh, yeah, I could not like i honestly i was like watching that i was like you know i can't on one hand, I was like, "This is this game is a little streamer baby," which is such a dumb criticism. But it's like it was kind of you know, oh, this person definitely just like hit this tree and is flying down this mountain at, and ragdolling at like twenty thousand miles an hour. That's gonna play pretty well. And but on the other hand, I was like, hey, you know, I mean, I'm not really someone who is really into like the you know 1080 or um, SX. SXX things like that, um, but SSX was fun. SSX Tricky was my favorite. Yeah, but I mean, I was just like, I mean, that seems like a really kind of interesting game that hasn't there hasn't really been a lot of stuff like that around today. So I think I'm really curious. I'm really curious to see how that turns out because I'm actually that looked pretty legitimately interesting. Uh, so I thought they had. Yeah, well, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. I insist. I, I want to go back to uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. Can I just say, after dumping uh, about 60 hours in the Metal Gear Solid The Phantom Pain, there was nothing about Ghost Recon Wildlands that I want to play right now. It, it looked like it looked like multiplayer The Phantom Pain while I was watching its, tra its many trailers. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't get me wrong, that doesn't sound like the worst idea, but I, I've played a lot of The Phantom Pain, and I just I was like, this is a very odd time to release that, because The Phantom Pain is probably the new benchmark on open world stealth. Uh, oh, but like an open world kind of emergent -y kind of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, that's, gonna, that's gonna be the thing with that game, is just like how robust can those missions get? Because like some of the Metal Gear stuff, like I mean, I put in, I put in crazy. like, I put in a ton of time into that game just because I mean, obviously it was my favorite game last year. Um, but I mean, there's like so many different ways to do the missions. Uh, there's just 
different approaches, different things, different things happen when you do it the same way. You know, you can stick a like see, sneak up behind a guy and see for him, and then wait 30 minutes for him to get on the helicopter and then blow it up. Like, and that's cool. Um, and it's gonna mm -hmm. be like if they if they can get that kind of depth uh, in a co-op setting and get, make that give that kind of depth for like all the co-op players. Like, you have one guy kind of like spotting targets for you, um, like from a sniping position, and other people kind of operating like close range like kind of typical stealth game style um like i feel like there's that could, that could, i could see that really being something pretty cool um honestly but again it's just going to come down to you know how what kind of complexity uh they can have but i mean if it's just like every single mission ends in like a bullet spongy kind of thing i mean it's just like oh well maybe not Oh yeah, can you imagine if it turns into the division where all of a sudden enemies now can take like five thousand bullets and it's uh I don't I yeah. don't think this game will be like that. Yeah, like, that would be know. that would be a big bummer for that game if it, if that's how like oh okay, add every every enemy gets plus five hundred HP because player two joined instead of having just mission I know it'd be it's like a lot of work, but it making sure in if, if they can go the lengths to ensure that those missions are complicated enough um, mm -hmm. and just have enough going on to really kind of encourage, you know, splitting up into different squads and handling different responsibilities. If there's enough room for all that, like that's that could be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, did we talk about, uh, I don't know if we talked about it last time, but did we talk about Resident Evil 7 last time? I don't know if you guys did. Did I wasn't there, but uh, that's I, Con uh, confirm. Mike doesn't listen to the podcast. <laughs> confirmed. I was on vacation. Come on, but I saw. I d am well aware that no, it's it's kind of something. I um. I mean, I I kind of ties into what we were talking earlier. With it felt like a lot of developers were. You know, it might not have been the splashiest conference, but I think there was a lot of people really getting out there and trying new stuff. Resident Evil Seven is a it's. It's VR, baby. I mean, uh, do you care? Do you care? Um, as a as a consumer, as a, as what many people would consider the baseline consumer, do you care? Uh, well, I can tell you that I have no care about Resident Evil, just like. Carte blanche, like, just no, thank you. I'll pass. Um, There's some Resident Evil but, games I kind of like personally. But I think from what I've heard a lot about, like, I know people a lot. I mean, four. I know four is very good, and was like a, a kind of a, a very drastic departure for that series. You know, five and six mm -hmm. kind of carried on to that, but really kind of wore out the welcome with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think a. I think Resident Evil, I mean, going back to, it really looks like they've kind of embraced, um, you know, what people think of as a horror game these days. Um, and I think, I mean, I'm all, like I said earlier, I'm all for companies, you know, have taking kind of risks like this and, you know, doing something really drastic and, you know, oh, obviously you don't want someone to just change something for the, no real reason or to not do anything creative and new um but i i really think like i i i'm someone i mean as someone who wasn't really interested in resident evil i'm really curious to see you know what that thing ends up being like is it are people going to be able to come to that as like a, oh like are they going to kind of did they pick up on like the pt influences that this thing pretty clearly has um are they going to be able to execute on something that works in VR and outside of VR? Is like, is it going to be as effective in both ways? Um, I guess that I, I'm really interested in seeing, you know, a, a big pivot in terms of how that series works has obviously worked out pretty well for them in the past. So I mean, I am on. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they are on to something here. Mm hmm. Uh, speaking of. People that are on the something. So, me and Josh talked briefly the other day about Microsoft announcing the Project Scorpio, which is going to be the Xbox replacement that'll run games. They're promising 
4K at 60 frames per second, which I demand to see that. I, I, I will believe it when I see it. Uh, I, but also, no, go ahead. That's kind of what I was going to say. I mean, those are, that's, re that's pretty taxing. I mean, a lot, a lot of even like the top line, top of the line gaming PCs can barely do 4K 60. I mean, just, yeah. just barely. And, and that, and yeah. that's gonna that's not exactly on, you know, the hot the hottest games off the press here. I mean that's you know, congratulations, you can run Undertale at four K sixty frames. Like I mean <laughs> that's awesome, but like because Undertale's great. I mean okay. Uh, Undertale's so, awesome. It's, it's so you, awesome. Dare it's, smoke no, smoke I'm box, just, no, come on. Um <laughs> But it's kind of, right now I I, ha I kinda have this analogy. It's like we know I mean we know how we know that the engine is pretty big in this car, but we don't exactly really know what the top speed is yet. I mean, because a lot of that's going to come down to, you know, how well all that stuff gets utilized by developers. I mean, how much of it they have access to. Um, it's, on paper, it's something, it's very impressive and I think could could approach, I mean, true 4K gaming. Because, I mean, that was something I thought about that was kind of out there about the Neo is that it's can it might be able to support 4K like video playback but not 4K resolution like you're not running The Witcher 3 on 4K on a PS Neo oh my gosh but that's if the the, if they if um Microsoft is really saying that th you know hypothetically they could do that on this new on this the, the the product Scorpio Xbox, which I believe they said is due fall 2017. I mean that's that's uh, big yeah, news. Yeah. I mean especially I mean in kind of like I, I was just mentioning, looking at a lot of the specs that are out there for the 4K. I mean that were originally broken by uh, Giant Bomb. This uh, I mean the first iteration of the Scorpio is a little is going to be a little a little beefier. Almost makes me wonder if Sony might be retooling what the what's inside the 4K and or in the in the Neo in response to that. I know it'd be a very quick turnaround, but it wouldn't be surprising for me to. It wouldn't be surprising if um. You know, Sony really kind of backed away from that. You know, in response to them knowing that you know they'd be coming up, they would be you know on those who of the all the who won E3 lists. They would be, you know, not on the winning side because they had a console with fewer teraflops or stuff like that. Oh, who cares? Exactly. Um, even though I think they rolled out like a, they've got a really cool line, cool lineup of games. So, I brought that up because you know, I think it was day three or day four of E3. Microsoft dropped a new announcement that took place immediately. Uh, they dropped the price of the X. Box one again. It is now two hundred and eighty dollars, and it comes with a free game. Now, I get to say this: that is a better deal than the Wii U. Yeah, yeah. This is the world we're living in now. Yeah, it is more cost effective to buy a Microsoft console three years after launch than it is to buy a Wii, a Nintendo system four years after launch. It just Because you could buy a Wii U, it'll come with a game, but you're spending an extra 40 bucks. Yeah. So it's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is... Oh, boy. Oh, I, I'm, I, can, I'm mistaken. It just, it, yeah, it's an extra 40 bucks, but yeah, that's the world we're living in. You can in. just see, like, the stone-faced Nintendo warehouses of, of Wii U's? No, not here. Mm -mm. Nope. No siree. <laughs> Nuh-uh. People love it. It's great. It's yeah, that thing is due for so a price drop. Well. Like, I mean, duh. it's it's been due for a price drop, but now it's like really, really due for a price drop. Yeah, let's let's go hit two fifty for the thirty two gig unit. No, let's let's be real, two hundred for the thirty two gig unit. I'm surprised they have not started selling it at like two hundred bucks for the and just made the thirty two gig unit. Yeah, I mean it it it's it's just really bizarre. I mean. It's it's really is just like, I mean, yeah, awesome that we're gonna get I guess Zelda on it, but I mean that's really kind of it's kind of it like, yeah, yeah I know we bagged on the Wii, we bagged on the Wii U pretty heavily in the past, but it's just like it deserves it. You know, Nintendo didn't really do a lot to 
I again I feel I it's it, it seems strange to me that they didn't ha take a time to you know sh I know it's all it's off for another year but to really I mean talk about the NX other than like you know oh this new Zelda what might be is going to be on it um we'll talk later I mean I think especially with just like a lot of the other news I'm just that that was something I was really surprised that uh they didn't I mean, I, I guess I understand, but it just seems like not a great move to me when, a, uh, you know, all the eyes in the industry are, you know, focused on this event. Why don't mm -hmm. they, I mean, why they have an opportunity to change the narrative. Why don't they do that? that I guess that just seems odd to me. Um, I guess mm -hmm. a couple a couple other personal, personal things I wanted to mention, uh, or at least yeah. things that I was looking looking towards. Um, I mean, recently it had come out that uh, uh, from software of the Dar the Dark Souls people are working on a uh -huh. couple of different projects, and I was I was a little hoping, really hoping to hear we to you know find out a little bit more about what they have going on. New uh, Armor Core, make it happen. I, I'll buy it day one. I, Just I, new Armor Core. One of them, I think one of them is a reboot. So I, I think that might be. A reboot of the original Armored Core. I hear. I'm in. I hear they're doing. I'm in. I hear they're doing. The report was a a new Souls type game, a new like a reboot and a new IP. Like that. Those were the things that kind of had in the pipeline. Um, so a lot of people were speculating that that new Souls type game is gonna was gonna be a Bloodborne two, uh, of some persuasion which i would be like hell yes i'm down with that because i think bloodborne was my favorite souls game um and i wouldn't have been surprised to see it at uh sony's conference mm -hmm. um so I was, I was a little bummed we didn't get to see that but overall i think you know while it may not have been as splashy as past e3s i think that there's definitely still you know a lot of cool stuff to look forward to and you know in terms of what a time to be alive Playing video games, my man. It's I stand by what I said originally. This was there were many parts in this E3 conference from many different vendors, not just ever. Uh, the Bethesda one was fun uh, to actually watch. The Nintendo one was extremely boring. The Sony one was very interesting because it showed new stuff and it showed uh, different information. And that orchestra was of course awesome. The Microsoft one was dull. The the EA one was just pan. It was just pandering. It was very pandering. I don't. I don't care about Zac Efron playing Battlefield One. I. I couldn't show me someone that actually knows how to play Battlefield One. Not. I don't care about your big. Oh, you mean like Wiz like Khalifa, that. man? He's. He's got the. Yeah. I. Oh wow. I yeah, cared man. even less about him playing. Battlefield hey, man. He. He's got the secret power. He can't tell you about it, but he's got something up his sleeve. And Snoop Dogg clearly showed he didn't know what the controller looked like when he first got it. Either that, or he was just high off his mind. Uh, I, and then sports. sports, 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 sports. Not that there's anything wrong with sports, but I don't want to hear about sports. Two hours of sports games. Also, I'm surprised. We, I mean, I'm not surprised because Rockstar just can does whatever the fuck they want. But really surprised we didn't hear anything out of like, I mean, with all all this, you know, rumor and. Pretty well sourced, and a, a couple of pretty well sourced and believable leaks that we've gotten about a new Red Dead type project that we didn't hear a peep from them. I mean, obviously, you know, the world will come, come, uh, the news will spread uh, fast and wide uh, when that day comes. But again, I'm surprised that they didn't, uh, you know, that we didn't hear anything about that here. I just read an article where uh, during E3, I think it was. No, never mind. It was back in April, where uh, one of the lead developers of From Software, uh, the lead director of uh, Dark Souls Three, actually, is hinting that they may be working on an Armored Core game. And uh, I'm in. I know that's not E3 related, but I'm so in. As long as we I do, we get the controller. Like, oh, that's Steel Battalion. That oh, Steel is. Battalion. Whoops, my bad. Armor Core is just your bog standard. I'm going to edit every single thing about this mech from its engine to the little blinky lights on the legs, and I'm going to take it into combat for bounty. I like it. And it's fun. It's such a fun game. Um, I think that's about it. I got nothing else. Yeah, I think we else? covered uh, 
pretty much most of the stuff I wanted to talk about. I mean, I, I'm excited to see some more Dishonored 2. I think that that's coming out yeah. quick. Yeah. Um, I guess. Let's just, just kind of running through make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, I think uh, just kind of parting shot here. I think uh, Spider-Man getting a uh, Spider-Man on the Sony conference. I think there's definitely room for like Spider-Man getting the Arkham Asylum level treatment in terms of just really doing, really making a good game. Um, mm-hmm. I think that there's definitely room for that. I think that could be really cool. Um, let me take a look. There was a lot of VR talk at E3 this year. A lot of uh, VR, and that's I'm not surprised because we're you know the honeymoon's kind of over on VR, so it's about oh yeah, and I oh, think yeah. I think. I mean, I guess that, that's probably what something else we PlayStation about. VR got announced? Place, uh, yeah. We talked about that last time. And that's that's coming. It sounds like they've got a lot of things lined up for that. So, 60 games by the end of 2016. That's a hard commitment, they're saying. That's a hard commitment, and the question is, you know, as always, are any of them going to be uh, going to be good? Um, I mean... So, yeah, when you promise, like, we're going to have 60 games. Oh, that that's... That's scary, actually, because like normally when you have like this gigantic launch library, you typically want about okay, you're launching a brand new system. Uh, can you give me like maybe ten, ten really good high quality games? Like, if you ever want to see what, in my opinion, is the best launch lineup ever, go see the launch lineup for the PS2 when it came out, and realize we may never have that again. <laughs> yeah, that's I like, mean. Just, <laughs> that's the thing it's like that that's kind of i think what where vr is it's in a weird spot right now i mean you you'd be people i think the novelty is kind of worn off for a lot of people and they're really looking for i mean truly compelling experiences in vr and it's i mean the, then the great thing about the playstation vr is that the barrier to entry is so low and it there's it, there's just a great point in that curve where it's pretty cheap but you're also getting some pretty quality experiences in terms of the gameplay so uh i mean i mean i i'm not gonna I buy mean, a psvr I'm, some I'm of those are gonna hit really but you know it's just yeah. like i think that they've sony's got the real chance to i mean with how i think they've got a real chance to be like the vr people if they pull it off i mean 400 bucks for everything you need uh, including the PS4, don't get me wrong, that's the cheapest by far, but that's still a chunk of change. That's, oh, yeah. That's the cost of... That's more than the cost of a PS4 to get the VR headset and everything for it. Mm-hmm. That That's a hard sell for a lot of people. I think, you know, once again, the price point for VR is the barrier of entry for people to get into VR, and that will remain the big barrier of entry. And once again, it's a peripheral. You don't need it to enjoy a solid gaming experience. Like, right. If you want to enjoy a solid gaming experience, buy a PlayStation 4. That's your $400 barrier of entry. But there's a lot of games for the PS4. And it's a Blu-ray player, and you can use it to play Netflix. So it's it's got some extra little things. Exactly. Games. And I think, like, I mean, the other thing is VR games are, are just, like, I mean, there's no people we still haven't quite figured out like the the value proposition is like is this like a twenty dollar thing is this like a forty forty dollar thing is this like is there a sixty dollar VR game out there I mean we don't really know and uh, well I mean, we're sure as hell gonna find out and know by the end of the year so well I think that's uh, all the big stuff I wanted to hit Stan is there anything else you got uh, I think. Uh... This is one of the, the – mark my words, this E3 plus probably the next three, uh, I think we're going to see the end of E3 in the next three to four years. If not a big change in – I mean – Yeah, it has to have a massive change. And not like that – not like that, you know, brand-initiated player event, which I've read about and saw some streams of, and that looked embarrassing. That looked just – yeah, yeah, brands. Doritos and Facebook everywhere. Brands, I love and, and brands. And Mountain Dew, get your gamer fuel, like, get oh, your, get your gamer stop. fuel, yeah, that is get a, your brands. Would you yeah. like some Doritos or Mountain I, I Dew and Facebook I imagine that they probably 
they're probably feeling the same thing and are probably uh, hard at work on, you know, what the hell, heck, uh, you know, what's coming next. Yeah, but, yeah. But yeah. All right. Uh, Let's tie this off. Cool. Well, if, you know, this is uh, Unscripted Gaming, if you want to uh, reach out to us here, you know, you can always uh, catch us on Facebook. I know we're on Twitter as well. Um, I'm actually doing going to be, now that I'm back from vacation, I'm going to be putting up some more writing here at M O O K J O O N E S uh, dot Tumblr. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just doing a little bit more writing. I might do an E3 write up on some of the things that have been on my mind. And we'll, uh, when, we'll probably have some new episodes coming soon because uh, there might be some other things I want to talk about. Mostly just more Overwatch, but, you know, that's. Pretty much all that matters. So, <laughs> Overwatch Overwatch competitive mode was announced at E3, and uh, that's that's good news all around. Yes, Stan, can we go play Overwatch now? Yeah, let's go play. All Overwatch. right, peace out. This is Mike for Unscripted Gaming. Bye, y'all. This is Stan. Bye.